It's time now for The Angler's View, brought to you by Pure Energy Rechargeable Batteries. Sean Steelhead inhaled a three-inch plastic worm drifted through a classic-looking pool. Let's dissect some of the factors involved here. The pool was five feet in depth at the deepest point, tapering up to one foot at each end where the faster-running water entered the pool and where it rejoined the main creek flow. The pool had various pieces of structure strewn throughout, including overhanging and partially submerged tree limbs, rock and sunken logs. Migrating fish will hold in areas like this as they make their way upstream. Trout will take advantage of the security that the deeper water and its structural elements offer, often holding very tight to submerged objects. The strike zone in this scenario was the area between an overhanging tree at the head of the pool and a submerged log located halfway down the drift. The feisty trout were holding tight to the edge of the submerged log in approximately five feet of water. Sean cast his float to the right of the overhanging tree and allowed his float to drift down the pool. By manipulating the precision action of his float reel, he was able to palm the reel at certain points to maneuver the float strategically around snags that were visible. Rainbow trout will rest in areas where faster currents of creeks and rivers slow down. This does not necessarily apply only to deeper, more obvious pools. Small boulders, sunken log jams, undercut banks, and gravel humps are often enough to create mini back eddies that trout will hold in. Look for subtle differences on your favorite creek. Productive baits for fall steelhead are salmon row, plastic worms, and steelhead jigs. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website.